Hello everyone, I'm Shariel McHenry, PLC President of Connor State College. I'm here with Dr. Nero with me today. Uh, we'll let him have the floor and he can introduce himself a little bit more. Donnie Nero, uh, past president of Connor State College from 2000 to 2011. Uh, it was a great uh, opportunity to serve there at the institution. Uh, met a lot of great friends and uh, still have a lot of those friends and colleagues. And uh, we uh, tried our best to do what was best for the students during those 11 years. So a uh, great honor to be with you today and thank you for inviting me. Thank you for coming and helping us celebrate Black History Month. We wanted to try something new this year and semester to get more viewers out and you know, educate others and just bring significance to the month. So thank you again for being with us today. I have a few questions. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. I have a few questions. Um, my first question is, would be, what's something that makes you proud of your heritage? Well, I'm very proud of the heritage, heritage uh, because of the uh, longevity, the suffering, and the opportunities that uh, we have and have not had in the past. And as I look back at uh, my forefathers who struggled so much and did so much, for us today, it makes me proud because uh, they were very resilient. And so we must be resilient as well in, in uh, everything that we do. Uh, they didn't give up, uh, we shouldn't give up. They continue to persevere. And so that uh, gives us strength that uh, we must have to continue to uh, go on in this life. So the heritage, uh, heritage of being an African-American is, uh, one that is uh, very important, not only to Oklahoma, but to the nation and the world as well. Absolutely. Uh, who was your favorite activist and who do you think was the most influential? I had a great activist in high school and I don't know if many people young or the younger generation have heard of her. Her name was Clara Looper. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Clara Looper was a civil rights leader in the state of Oklahoma. And not only was she a civil rights leader in the state of Oklahoma, she was my teacher in high school also. So Mrs. Looper uh, did so many th things for uh, the black population in the, in the United States, specifically in Oklahoma. But she was one who uh, believed in uh, all equal, heaven, e equality for all people. Uh, in the state of Oklahoma and in the country. So she taught us at, in the daytime as a teacher. And then at night, uh, once she left school, she would go downtown and she would uh, march uh, around the, the department stores and the drug stores. And they had the city and movement in Oklahoma City. So she was uh, my civil rights uh, uh, hero and as well as uh, my uh, great educator who taught us so many things uh, for the benefits of African-Americans. That's absolutely amazing. Being getting a firsthand yeah. experience with someone that was very active in the civil rights movement, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, yes, we, we thought we were uh, very privileged. Gotcha. Um, why is it important to celebrate Black History Month, it, but Black History Month overall? It gives us an opportunity to recognize those individuals once again for their accomplishments and achievements. But not only should black uh, history be uh, studied during the month of February because black history is Oklahoma history. Mm -hmm. Black history is United States of America history. So it's an opportunity for us to once again remind people of the struggles and the battles that they have gone through at the same time, it gives us the, the opportunity, especially the younger generation who did not know and, and don't know many of those pioneers in the past to provide them an opportunity to learn about their forefathers and the struggles that they went through. So black history is very important, but it must be celebrated and it must be uh, studied uh, 12 months out of the year for the significance to make a difference in the lives of so many people. Absolutely. Do you believe we have reached equal rights now? No, I think we still have a ways to go. I think the opportunities are better. Mm -hmm. 
for uh, African Americans today because of the African American pioneers and the European pioneers uh, working hand in hand. Uh, civil rights uh, are something that uh, we pray one day that we will attain. But as long as there are people who oppose uh, uh, the races and oppose people from coming together, I think that battle will continue to go on. So we haven't made it there yet, but when we look behind us, we can see where we have been, providing us an opportunity to look forward to see where we need to go. So each generation has an important part to play. So if the past generation has struggled and the present generation uh, sets on its heels, if you will, but it sets us back more and more each year. So it provides an opportunity for each generation to move forward to provide those avenues of civil justice and civil rights in America. Mm -hmm. you, so since you are a past president of Connor State College, do you believe you are presented with more obstacles in the process of obtaining that, that position? Yeah, there were quite a few obstacles that I uh, had to endure, uh, first of all, to achieve that position. So prior to attaining that, there were some uh, application processes and uh, nominations and those kinds of things that had to happen. And I've always said as the, the first African-American president in 2000, in, uh, in, in the year 2000, that was an achievement, but it sure did take a long time for that to happen. So it took longer than what I thought, but yes, there were many struggles then and there are gonna be continue to be many struggles uh, for those who are aspiring to move forward. So yes, uh, there were some struggles, there were some roadblocks, there were some naysayers, but there were a lot of good people also who provided opportunities and a way for me to achieve that uh, great success. Absolutely. Do you believe any of those ob obstacles came from the color of your skin? Oh yes, most definitely. Uh, it did then and it still does uh, for me and for you and all of those others who are African Americans because instead of people, the first thing they see, instead of the first thing they see is a person, they see the color, the color of our skin. And so that's the first barrier that many people have to overcome is the color of the skin because of the, uh, the stereotypes and the prejudice that many people have. So the color of the skin does make a difference, but I've always said if people would just give individuals an opportunity, an opportunity to uh, perform and to do their jobs and their tasks, they'll see that the cut of, color of one's skin really doesn't make any difference. Absolutely. All right, my next question would be, how have you endured through that adversity that you went through? becoming the president and your- How have I endured? Yes, sir. How did I endure with it? Mm -hmm. Well, some of the things, uh, since you know those prejudice and those uh, things are out there, there comes a time when you have to put those things aside or on the back burner. You know they're there. So instead of dealing with those, you need to go ahead. You have a job to do and a task to perform. And so you need to go ahead and do the task at hand, perform the task at hand, do the job at hand, and then let, uh, let what will uh, occur, occur. Because when people see that you can perform those tasks just as well as another person, then that removes some of those barriers or those stigmas that a person may have. For an example, when I first came to Connors, one of the things that I uh, demanded or encouraged the employees to do was to be at work at a certain time, the time that they were supposed to, and leave the time you were supposed to. So for me to uh, require the employees to be there, say at eight o'clock, I had to be there at eight o'clock. I couldn't come walking in the door at 9.30 or 10 o'clock. I had to be there at eight o'clock, although I was there uh, prior to eight o'clock, I was there many times at 7.30. But so you have to be an example and so, instead of just talking the talk, you have to walk the walk and you have to be an example and let people know that the rules and regulations apply to all people, especially the ones who are creating those. Absolutely. 
leading by example is a great way uh, or a great skill yes. that leaders should have. My next question. That's exactly right. Uh, what do you believe the number one issue that African Americans are suffering from or facing today? There are many opportunities for us today, mm -hmm. but uh, I think one of the major issues that we have is uh, apathy. Uh, the opportunities are there. We just have to step out there and take advantage of those. Mm -hmm. And many times we don't take advantage of those because uh, for various reasons, we don't think we can do it or we don't think that we'll have the opportunity or we're just not persistent enough to do it. So apathy, is something that will uh, really uh, take over a person's uh, desire and life if, if we allow to. So we have to look at all the advantages and all the opportunities that we have and set apathy aside and take advantage of what we have before us today. Absolutely. Uh, what are some ways we can show our gratitude to our, our ancestors for fighting for our freedom? Uh, doing uh, things right, uh, persistence, mm -hmm. uh, showing uh, others how to uh, perform and do. In other words, do, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So our responsibility, see our ancestors, we, we stood on their shoulders and still standing on their shoulders right now today. At some point, we need to get off their so shoulders because we need to stand on our own feet. The, the younger generation still may be standing on our shoulders, but one of the things that we have to do is be a reciprocal kind of a generation where my forefathers fought and did things for me. I have to do the same kinds of things for the next generation to come, come forward. So, so we must have the attitude of what's mine is mine. We can't have that attitude. Mm -hmm. What's mine is yours as well, but there still takes an effort. There is an effort for a person that has to work for it. Everything is not going to be handed to us. We're going to have to work for some things, but it's made easier when somebody is helping us, when somebody is in our corner. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, to my knowledge, you founded the Oklahoma African American Educators Hall of Fame. Uh, why do you believe that was so important to uh, come up with or for it to actually be a thing? Okay. That Hall of Fame was created uh, because mm -hmm. my wife and I, we attended segregated schools, high schools. Mm -hmm. So she attended one of the historical black towns, which is Clearview. I attended Dungy High School in Oklahoma City. So we attended those black schools during the time of, time of segregation. And we didn't have a lot. We didn't have uh, much of anything as far as, we never did have new class uh, textbooks or uh, equipment for athletics or any of those things, band, uniform, uh, those things were all hand-me-downs from those, um, the white schools. But one of the things those teachers did, they never did give us the idea that we were second class. Mm -hmm. They always provided the best of everything that they had for us. So when we realized many of those teachers that we had, they were dying without the recognition that they so rightly deserved, my wife and, and I said, you know, we have to do something. And so we, the idea of the Oklahoma African American Educators Hall of Fame was created with the idea of recognizing those pioneers who are and were responsible for us being where we are today. And so we have been uh, inducting individuals for the past 10 years, and we will have another induction ceremony this year. We induct 10 into the Hall of Fame every year, and that Hall of Fame center or museum is located where we reside today in the town of Clearview. So it's a, it has been well received and something that many people have embraced because that is part of history, a history that we don't want to die. Absolutely. I think that's absolutely amazing and very interesting. Um, I wanted to read more about it and, and my knowledge on it. So I just had to ask yeah. you about that. Well, you, you, 
If you get an opportunity, we'd love for you to come to Clearview so you can see that. I would absolutely love to. Yes, we'd love to have you. Well, is there any advice or anything you would like to add? Well, I would say to the students at Connors and all the students uh, in the state of Oklahoma, not only the African-American students, but all students, what a great opportunity you have to be in college. What a great opportunity you have to be in a country where you're free to pick and choose anything that you want to do. But one of the things I always want to encourage students to do, when you look at the overall picture of how many people are going to college in the great country, in our great state, there's something that an individual must do. A student must do the best they possibly can. Because once they graduate from college, they will be competing against all those people, not in, only in the state of Oklahoma, but in the, in the world for positions and jobs. So if, 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 if you have taken a semester where you didn't do well and you slacked off and you said, oh, it'll be all right. When an employer or a potential employer look at that transcript or they look at your grades and there is one semester that you didn't do well in comparison to someone who did well the whole time they were in college, a person may lose out on that job. So in essence, we are preparing and the young people should be preparing for the job today that they want tomorrow. They cannot wait until a job becomes open or available to get ready. If you wait until a job is, is, is available to get ready, you waited too late. So take advantage of the opportunities in higher education and do the best you can every day while you're in attendance. Absolutely. Well, I just wanted to thank you so much and I wanted to applaud you on your many accomplishments throughout your life. I think you are an absolutely amazing individual. Um, I just really appreciate everything you've done and everything you continue to do. Well, thank you very much. Uh, uh, without the help of many people, it wouldn't have happened. But once again, I do uh, take pleasure in many of the accomplishments. Uh, but right now, also, I'm taking pleasure in helping other people. And I do appreciate you inviting me to be a part of the uh, Black History Program at Connor State College. Thank you for meeting with me. I really appreciate it.